coming to you live from Orange County, California with news anchor Brody White. This is the HP News. News that's specifically about Jews. Good evening, I am Brody White here with breaking news. Ethan and Ela Klein of H3H3, or even more notably, the H3 Podcast, have gotten themselves into a bit of drama regarding donation shaming the CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, which included a 37-minute meltdown tirade posted to the H3H3 channel. But even more troubling is the recent purchase of their $9 million Bel Air mansion, along with their consistent lies and manipulation of their own audience. Let's go to the other Brody White for a more in-depth explanation of how all this ties together. Brody? Thank you, other Brody. Ethan Klein may very well be the biggest piece of shit to ever grace the website known as YouTube.com. And I mean that with full sincerity, by the way. Because I have seen video after video made on Ethan Klein, particularly calling out his hypocrisy and contradictions and statements that he's made on his unbearable podcast. <laughs> I'm serious. That's the reality of being a, <laughs> you know, uh, as famous as we are. But I think- It th really is for YouTubers. Now, what I'm gonna tell you today is that each and every one of those videos has failed miserably to hit the nail on the head on why Ethan Klein is actually such a piece of shit. Now recently, he got called out by this guy, claiming that he had donation shamed Jeff Bezos after giving a $100 million donation to the coronavirus pandemic. Now, as far as I'm considering this, $100 million is $100 million. That is a lot of money that has gone to save lives and fight against this pandemic. Ethan did the exact same thing. He looked at, uh, he looked at Jeff Bezos, said, wow, the richest guy in the world only gave $100 million and just completely shot on it. And it sent Ethan into an absolute spiral, making a 37 minute video when it really could have been like 10 seconds. Hey everyone, this guy called me out, said I donation shame Jeff Bezos. It actually never happened. You can't find any video footage of me saying that. So, you know, he's lying. Could have just been that, but he had to stretch it out to pander to his audience and make sure they're on his side still. He is such a slave to his own audience. I swear to God, he apologizes what seems like weekly. You have brought in this podium because there's a lot of, there's been a lot of apologies being issued lately. And I feel that we, it was uh, appropriate to bring out an apology podium. I apologize, what am I apologize? I apologize for making anyone uncomfortable with bad jokes. I apologize for not following the rules. Not following the rules. Ela chimed in from the other room. Thank you. I apologize to my cleaning lady who <laughs> I left a giant shit streak in the toilet on the way out that I know she's going to have to clean. A lot of people have been complaining recently that our videos suck and that they hate us and that we're <laughs> dirty, greasy Jews that need to, and it's time for us to stop. And frankly, you know what? I agree. Welcome everybody to the H3 podcast. The number one place to come get upset when you're trying to relax. Well, you know, but ultimately I failed once again as a host, but I will say that um, I am sorry for prying. When like the audience turns on, on you, it, it, it is such an awful feeling. I want you to know how badly I felt from the video game thing. But on the other hand, I understand that, you know, you guys, you guys want videos. But what's funny is he did donation shame Jeff Bezos prior to the $100 million donation when he made like a $690,000 donation to something else. To be this righteously angry, surely I must have said that. I mean, all of his fans are spamming our subreddit, they're tweeting at me hate shit, they're emailing me hate shit, it's got all these views and likes, surely I actually said that, right? So I talked about how Amazon was only giving sick leave to people who test positive for coronavirus, which, I mean, admittedly is insane and obviously not donation shaming. The hypocrisy with Ethan Klein is actually never ending. I mean, there's somebody who made a hour and a half video 
on just that, on just statements of hypocrisy pretty much. And there's been even additional statements of hypocrisy from him after the upload of this video. I could take all of the new hypocritical statements from Ethan, compile it into this video for you today, and it'd be another hour and a half video just on hypocritical statements from him. That's how much self-discipline he really has. None. But no, let's take it back really quick to some H3H3 roots, where he had a lot of popularity coming up, and a lot of people actually liked the guy, myself included. You know, it was a fun, silly little channel, calling out people for misbehaving, and that's the way it should be, right? If you're still a fan of H3 and continue to watch his videos to this day, I mean, there is no hope for you. You are such a brainwashed idiot, and you need to know this. I mean, I'm telling you, this is the right opinion. I've never been wrong in my life, and this is not one of those instances I'm right again. You are so delusional. Because back in the day, all these bigger YouTube channels who really pushed the H3 train, they just told you, oh, this guy, he's so funny, he coughs, and he, and he coughs, and he also, he says some things, and, but then he coughs, and it's so funny, the, the, the coughing's great. <coughs> and you're all like, oh my god. This is the greatest thing. When I was just trying to go after something that I really wanted. Maybe not the dream, you know what I'm saying? You just like what you're told to like. You know, you don't even research things and research people and have an opinion for yourself. You just go, oh, this guy told me you like him, so yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. H3 has built such a big audience over the past few years making a specific kind of content, which is calling out people for their wrongdoings, their mistakes, their hypocrisy, their misbehavior. And after all of this time, uh, now just does- We are past time for our second break. Let's, well let's then, the other let's give a big warm thank you to stamps.com. And what a better time to use stamps.com than now. Let's avoid crowds. So the initial reason which built this big audience for him, the reason people liked him, he no longer does it. Throughout all of that time, he's had his audience give him donations towards the lawsuit he was in, which, hey, I'd really like to see if all that money went towards the lawsuit. I'd love to see receipts, which he demanded from Logan Paul after he had claimed he was going to donate to suicide prevention. He made this whole cheesy, cheesy corny PR, I'm donating a million bucks to suicide prevention. By the way, where's the receipt on that? think he'd have like a giant check or something or a receipt and be like hey guys here's the proof. <laughs> I'm not saying he's a liar but all I'm saying is where's the proof are we supposed to take this guy at face value that's an incredible claim I donated a million dollars to suicide yeah. prevention where's the chat I think it's where's pretty reasonable to ask receipt where that receipt where that <laughs> receipt no but seriously where that receipt <laughs> Play I would provide it because this is the internet everybody's skeptical Ethan and Ela were made into characters for some DLC package for Payday 2, some game. That's right. Me and Ela have been put into one of the most prolific games of all time, Payday 2. The game is so much fun, you guys. It's on sale right now. The base game is 75% off. Right now, the DLC is $4.99. The creator of that game said it's going to cost $5, and every penny is going to go towards H3H3's lawsuit. Can you imagine? I mean, this is at the height of this guy's popularity. This guy has to have hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe even in the millions, just from that alone. It's kind of ironic that he now has a $9 million mansion in Bel Air, which we're gonna get to that. But we wanna see some goddamn receipts. No, but seriously, where that receipt? <laughs> it's also allowed Ethan and Ela to create the Teddy Fresh clothing line. What a name. Ela's dream, designing clothes being the CEO of a clothing company. What is your long-term vision for Teddy Fresh? Um, I hope that it can be like a serious brand, you know, that people know about and they know the vibe of it and, and it's got its own following. Mm. And I hope to be able to make like cool, uh, kind of like high quality stuff, but mm. for not that expensive, like. Can we please for a goddamn second, and no one ever says this, but I'm going to right here, right now, because it needs to finally be said about these two. And it gets worse, by the way. 
Can we stop treating Ela Klein with this fake love and just pandering towards her? She is so goddamn boring, it makes me want to puke. She is not meant for the screen. She's not meant for YouTube. She is not meant for a podcast. She has no personality. You've got to have a personality for that. And she does not, unfortunately. And, you know, with a kid on the way, my God, I don't want to <laughs> be... Yeah. I want to be better than this, right? Like... But Ethan is so reliant on somebody else because he's such a fat pussy, has to have her in every goddamn video just to make her feel involved. What is that about? Is this supposed to be entertainment and comedy? Or are we here to have a fucking nap time? And let's not forget to mention the clothes. I mean, hello, I've seen this 8 million times, this fruity fucking bright colored shit that a five-year-old could put together. These are designs that a five-year-old could color with some crayons. I'm like, eh, it's my short idea. And this is what Teddy Fresh is. I could take a fat shit on a canvas and poop out a better design than this. But yet we go, oh my God, yay! Yay, Hila! Look at some of these designs. This Franken-striped t-shirt. How, why is that sold out? Who's wearing this? I mean, this box panel t-shirt, one of the ugliest t-shirts I've ever seen in my life. You wouldn't even be able to slip this on my dead body in a casket. I'd come back alive, take it off, and strangle you with it. And not to mention, $52? That's crazy! This coach's jacket makes me want to throw up. And just to let you know, all of this is made in China with mass-produced shit material, overpriced as fuck. Now, please, we're going to get to it. Allow me to explain to you why Teddy Fresh is such a goddamn scam. Let's go back to the podcast really quick. Okay. We're like that a thruple now, I feel. No, no. Oh, this is what it feels no. like. We're all getting along. I'm like, is this a thruple? You told me about your house. No. <laughs> it's just friendship. I don't know what is happening. Look, I'm not upset. I just find it bizarre. I mean, can you keep that from me? That this is so fucking bizarre. That my brother-in-law, <laughs> Hila's brother, is now in a Trisha Paytas video doing mukbangs, and I didn't even know. Can you I just imagine? <laughs> I mean, can you just imagine how strange this is? There's no denying that. You yeah, transparently right. said that you love having her on because it's great content and people check it out. I mean, that, that's not... That's not serious. I mean, but also because it is entertaining content. It's entertaining as fuck. Why do you think I endure her? She's insane, but it's entertaining. That's why people like it. It's crazy. He's been making reality TV for his audience now with Trisha Paytas and has acted like, I don't know why people are... The reason I have her on is because she's crazy. She's just so kooky. She's out of her mind. It's so entertaining. What if I told you? Trisha Paytas is an actor. The whole dumb blonde thing that she does, it's a whole shtick. It's a whole troll shtick. She's been on so many programs, you wouldn't believe it. She's got quite the resume, including, but not limited to, the Tim and Eric show. Accessible to me in a way? It seemed like you could maybe do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and it what well, Seinfeld didn't felt Nathan for you, which by the way, in Ethan Klein's own words, is one of his favorite shows ever. And then Eric and and Nathan roll up. Oh my God. First I first Nathan come and he's hanging out and I'm like, I'm trashed. I'm blackout drunk. And this is when I was like in the midst of my biggest like I was just a super fan. I was I I I, I still yeah. love the guy, but I was yeah, like yeah. in the middle of watching a show, and I was like, "This guy's a fucking genius. I love everything he does." So he saw Trisha Paytas on the show as an actor. America's Got Talent. <laughs> Look like you work in Vegas. Really? I know I get that a lot. So I thought I was a stripper, or a porn star. I'm like, nope. I love Jesus. I'm not like that. I'm like a computer programmer, but I work in my house, so no one ever sees me. And like, I'm no. a rapper. Yes, a rapper. A rapper. All right. Every single summer when I turn on TV, I'm watching H.T. thinking how should we be on that stage on a case show. We're so awful cold. Take it seriously because I never had a challenge. The Millionaire Matchmaker. She's been on Ellen. I read. Okay. <laughs> so do I. I mean, I read. 
yeah. I read kind of fast, you know? Like, yeah. Oh, you read? That's your, your... I read. That's my talent. But what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a, I'm a waitress. Uh-huh. My strange addiction. My name is Trisha, and I can't stop tanning. I mean, I could stop tanning. I just don't want to stop. And the list goes on. There's a video on YouTube dedicated to all the TV appearances she's made. Now, do you think shows are bringing her in for auditions and going, oh my God, this lady's just crazy out of her mind. Great TV. No, dude. She's an actor. She's auditioning for roles. This is her thing. This is the character she likes to play. She's even said it herself. Paytas has said she was inspired by comedian Andy Kaufman, whom she has been a fan of since childhood. Trisha said he made his living just being all sorts of characters and nobody really knowing who the real Andy Kaufman is. And in a sense, I don't think any of you know who the real Trisha Paytas is either. This is the exact thing that Ethan has built a career off of being against reality TV fake type bullshit, including somebody like Trisha Paytas. It's entertaining as fuck. Why do you think I endure her? She's insane, but it's entertaining. <laughs> yeah. That's why people like it. It's crazy. I'm going to be doing the 100 layers of cum challenge. No, 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 no. Bring her on. Yeah, dude, she's just crazy. It's entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the cum video with cum dripping down her lips. So entertaining. Let's bring her on. Now in a twist of sudden events, Trisha Paytas is dating Ela Klein's brother. I'm not, it's not even that I'm upset that they're together. I just want him to tell me what's happening. Yeah, I'm sure because Ethan and Ela, I'm sure would have no issue at all with a family member dating somebody who's just so crazy and senile. Yeah, or Ethan knows Trisha Paytas is an actor and they created this fake reality TV together. Yeah, yeah, I wonder which one of those options it is. Hmm, yeah, okay, okay, cool. <laughs> Yo, you know what's tripping me out about Trisha, how she's like in everything? She was in Nathan For You, did you know that? No, I Cause didn't. Because I, I watched, that's like my favorite show ever, and I watched it uh, before I knew anything about Trisha. Hold on, let me show you. Oh, this is so. And we keep saying she's been in every show, and it's like, she was literally the, so she was the remember how he had that show about the security guard who loves big tits yeah she was the big titted uh, girl that he fell in love with an absolute necessity to take a look at and which is also the biggest fuck you from ethan and neela to every single viewer out there is none other than the podcast throughout the lifetime of the podcast it's been proven over and over again that ethan is simply not cut out to be a podcast host or an interview of any sort. Let's take a look back very quickly at the infamous Bill Burr interview. Give out all that information. Oh, you don't uh, even want to say really? how many because you're afraid that it will yeah, compromise your privacy. Yeah, by all means, keep talking privacy. about it. Is there anybody you can cut this out? <laughs> I'm honest, dude. Like, Seriously? Yeah, no, dude. I, yeah, there's fucking lunatics out there. Okay. Well, off the air. Off the air, I'll tell you. <laughs> all right. Jeez. <laughs> I love how surprised he is. Jeez, well, you actually, can mention the amount. Absolutely, absolutely <laughs> crazy people. Okay. Out there. Yeah. All right. I don't know why that took out so flat. And to top off his terrible interview skills, there have been countless times where Ethan has, quite simply, refused to entertain. Which may I remind you is his fucking job. Take a look at this clip here. High tech, low pizza. <laughs> Well, it's been fun. Uh, a lot of scooter talk. Yeah, maybe too much. Maybe we need to slow down on the scoot. Scoot on out of here with the scooter talk. Maybe we need to walk a little. We've been scooting too much. Right. Ethan has built a huge audience doing something specific, that being, you know, roasting people, calling people out for their misbehavior, or things of that nature, and has completely went the other direction and said, ah, we're done with that. They haven't made H3H3 videos. They don't do it anymore. In fact, they've both stated, this is just where they're at in their life now. This is what they enjoy doing. The podcast is easier, more ads, more money. Instead of doing something that they loved doing and built this audience off of, they've completely abandoned that and have fed the audience now with such lackluster 
no effort podcast. Um, that one is going to be hard to top. For sure. Now, now going uh, talking about. Sorry, Eli. Am I hitting your not yeah. your your J's? You are. Um. <clears throat> So stupidest thing to do. And then other times where Ethan goes, hmm, what should we talk about? I don't know. What else should we talk about? What do you mean, what should you talk about? There's a million things in the fucking world. This is your show. You can literally write what to fucking talk about, and he can't even do that. That's how lazy this guy is. It's unbearable to fucking watch. Iguanas, grilled cheese. Uh, chairs, your kid, how fat you've gotten. You can talk about anything. Your fan base is so brainwashed, they'll literally sit there and eat it up. You just have to talk, and he can't even do that. Scoot on out of here with the scooter though. Right. And he's done shit like this multiple times where he completely checks out and unwilling to entertain. I mean, the viewers have given him this lifestyle. Could you imagine if I film an episode, five minutes in, everything's going well, it's flowing, everything's great, and then I just said, eh, I'm just gonna do this on the keyboard for the rest of the time. I mean, you guys would find my address and make sure I'm swatted twice a week for the rest of my life. Essentially what has happened is Ethan and Neela have scammed every single person that's ever supported them by first garnering their attention with videos that they like, being roasting people, making fun of them, calling people out. That's what they like. That's what they subscribed for. And now that they have abandoned, they've completely went the easy route of doing a podcast which, by the way, is a total ripoff of the Howard Stern show. I mean, to the studio design, all the way to the purple couch, now all the way to the assistants, who are supposed to be characters on the show, which he treats like shit. <laughs> what am I doing? What am I, why do you even talk to him? Like, I try to talk to him. I try to include him in the show. I like the whole, that dynamic here on the show is what makes it interesting for me. We got three guys back there, a bunch of characters, and the two of us in here. I'm trying to make the show interesting. I'm trying to enrich the dynamic. But Ian refuses to engage. Like, after all I've done for him, I gave him purpose. I gave him a job. I gave him a girlfriend, a love life, everything. I built him up to the man he is today. And I don't know what I do to deserve this disrespect. Like, I genuinely want to know how he is and I'm getting shtick. I don't understand. What do you have to say about that? I'm not jo- I'm not joking. Hmm. Offering a good Turn off his mic. <laughs> I mean, all right, let's move on because Ian's putting everyone yeah. to sleep. We talk about everything, <laughs> but but we have to move on because mm -hmm. he's slowing the show down. A little disrespectful. <laughs> Tells mildly. All right, let's just move on because I'm getting upset. No, can't, you do, I can't and I respect have you that. running around like a fucking marauder, and I won't. But you only live life once. Can I tell a bunch of jokes about your wife? Mm. But they've taken you along this journey, giving you what you want for a short period of time, getting you to help them start up this clothing line, which now they have in Zoomies and they're making so much money, right? Multi-million dollar company. To doing this on the podcast. Not trying whatsoever. Are you telling me that this effort is deserving of a $9 million mansion? which they claim they moved into because they got swatted. We moved because we kept getting swatted. That was the reason we decided to move. I mean, how fucking dumb are you? Call the police, say, hi, my name is Yada Yada. I have a popular YouTube channel. I'm at a high risk of being swatted. I've gotten swatted before. Will you please call me if there's ever a complaint about myself or my residence, just to make sure everything's okay before you bring a SWAT team to bust down my door. But he's so fucking stupid, he can't even think to do that. Ethan and Neela have went above and beyond to make it seem that they're not disgustingly rich, just so their audience can have just a small tiny sliver of respect for them, as well as this wave of relatability. I'm gonna tell you exactly how much money no, she no, made. No, no. She made $8,000 for that video. Wait, you have to cut that because you Promise. tell me how much you made on the video, like your last video. Tell me how much you made right now. $2,000. Look it up. Can I see it? I showed you mine. Let me see yours. 
It's only fair. No, it, I, it is I, fair. It's not fair. <laughs> like, if you talk about my money. So yes. let me talk about your money. So that way, let me see on the last podcast how much you made. You don't have to. Let me just see it and share, and share it out loud. Pull it up. That's only fair. Well, we no, we do have a YouTube contact <laughs> you have if to, you want. You have to edit yeah. that out then because no, it really I is. don't. I, know I mean, look what they say about them being millionaires. So it's my fault you got that wrong because I'm making fun of billionaires. You know, billionaires the uh, the most disenfranchised group of people in America. By the way, let's all fucking let's all well, stick our neck out for billionaires in the world. I mean, yeah, we've got millions, but these guys have got billions. I mean, the billionaires are the bad guys. I mean, how much can you pander to try and act like you're normal? I mean, anybody who's not completely stupid knows that having millions of dollars is not really normal. Uh, it's, uh, there's not millionaires out walking the fucking street everywhere. I know you sure. guys think we're rich. I know everyone thinks we're rich and like, uh, and okay, we're rich. $100,000 is a fucking lot of money. That hurts. <laughs> I want $100,000 back in my bank account, trust me. No, but it doesn't hurt. It I, feels it, good to nah. give. <laughs> but they know their audience and they know that they'll believe it. I mean, they know that their audience is dumb as fuck. So to end this, to any H3 viewer, it's time to either demand better, or even better yet, it's time to move on. I mean, are you really gonna stand for this? H3, you're done. And we all know you're done. And it's time to get. Get! Get. God damn. And before we go, I think everybody deserves to know where all of their money and support has gone over the years, and I'm talking the lawsuit money, Hoopa Fund, the Payday 2 donations. Where's all that Teddy Fresh merch money gone? Well, I'll tell you, it's gone to a $9 million Bel Air mansion. Absolutely beautiful. Why don't we all take a quick little tour? Let's go. Come one, come all, if you're ready to ball. Jewish style. First, we'll touch base with Ethan and Ela Klein of H3H3 in their unnecessarily huge Bel Air mansion that would make the rest of the Jewish community puke because of how much it costs. Even though they denied our request to be featured on the show, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. So alert your friends, old and new, let's cough our way to Bel Air <coughs> and see what Ethan and Ela are up to. I'm breaking in to give you a tour of their brand new home today on YouTube Cribs. <coughs> Was that funny? Was that funny? Was that cough funny? Yeah, I didn't think so. So as you can see, I'm currently in the backyard overlooking this beautiful view of the pool and the backside of the Klein Mansion. Enormous yard, plenty of space. I'm sure Ethan takes full advantage of all of the space, doing plenty of activities. Uh, that's how he keeps so trim. And why don't we take a look inside? Now, keep in mind, I am going to have to break in. But however, I just do believe that everyone has a right to know what Ethan and Ela Klein have been doing with their money that they've given them over the years, whether that be donating to their lawsuit, uh, buying Teddy Fresh merch like they've been asked to do. I want to know what have they been putting this money towards? Why don't we have a look? Okay, so we're gonna start off in the kitchen. Just a little disclaimer, we're gonna have to keep it down a notch. Uh, we do not want cot. I do believe they're home. Um, and I don't know if any of you knew this, but if you get caught inside of a Jewish person's mansion, they actually throw you into an oven and put it on 425 degrees and let you slow bake. It's very twisted. Uh, and I could easily fit inside of their oven. It's very huge. Um, but this beautiful kitchen is where Ethan and Ela Klein cook very nutritious meals. Um, I mean, well, well, there's a bag of McDonald's right there and also a bag of Wendy's and also some Panda Express, I believe. Um, so it does make sense why Ethan is so fat now. He's so fat and it's causing him to be such a bitchy person. I think it's affecting his mental health, the way he eats. He's depressed all the time and bitchy. He's just a male bitch. Um, and it's okay that I say that. I, As you can see, I'm wearing a Harvard medical shirt. I am a doctor. Um, let's go on to the bedroom. This is an absolutely stunning master bedroom. It's so huge and so spacious. 
Everyone should strive to have a bedroom this big. It is necessary to have very, very big bedrooms. Not only that, but this house has six bedrooms and seven and a half bathrooms. That means seven and a half toilets. I guess you just cut one in half right down the middle. Uh, but anyway, that's a lot of places to take shits. Now, when you're eating Wendy's, McDonald's, Panda Express, you name it day in and day out, you're going to have to take a lot of shits. Okay, so now it looks like we're in some sort of lounging room, TV room, possibly a home theater room. Very necessary uh, to have one of these in your home, especially if you are a YouTuber. Uh, this is completely necessary. Um, so if you don't have one of these rooms in your home, you're really not living. You're a peon, scum of the earth, piece of shit. Now, those are just facts. I, I, I don't make the rules. However, I do enforce them. Um, so it's great knowing that everyone who's bought Teddy Fresh merch, uh, which, by the way, why would you even wear some of this shit? You know what I'm saying? It looks like, uh, you know, eight-year-old kids uh, would dress their Sims character up in this type of shit because they think it's silly. Um, but, you know, to each their own. Uh, personally, I'd wipe my ass with it, and that'd probably be about it. Here's one of their seven and a half bathrooms. This one here does have a full toilet in it. And I believe Ethan forgot to flush because there is a mammoth of a turd just chilling inside of the toilet. Smells of like a quarter pounder or a Big Mac or something. Very disgusting stuff. Very, very putrid smell in here. My God, it smells like sweat, pungent, disgusting. Yuck. Anyway, it's so big, it's probably a lot bigger than some of your apartments. I mean, you could move in your stuff and start living a good life. That's seriously how big it is. And Hold on, I think I just heard Ethan. Dude, let's get the fuck out of here. I don't want to get thrown in the oven.